All right, we'll go ahead and, and get things kicked off. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are witnessing a massive shift in the platforms that consumers are using every day uh, to search for local businesses. But what's unique about the restaurant business uh, is that restaurants are the most searched for local business within the search space. So although typically a laggard style business, search and the change within search is impacting this industry, uh, some would say the most. It used to be that when you search for anything online, you would get 10 blue links back on a screen. You'd click the one you want, you'd leave that third party site, and then you'd end up on a restaurant business's website. You then navigate through that site to make that decision. But today's services have completely changed that, and what we're getting are now direct answers. My name is Lee Zucker. I'm the head of industry for food service at Yext. So I run global product and strategy for everything related to the food vertical. I'll talk about Yext at the end uh, if we have time. This is more educational around the restaurant industry and how that's changing in search. Because we have a pretty small room, kind of want to evaluate who's here by a show of hands. Anyone here own or run a restaurant? I had a feeling that was the case. Raise your hand if you do work with restaurants. OK. And raise your hand if you're just curious how people are finding restaurants today. And, and OK, so yeah, that was, that was my, you stole the punchline. <laughs> raise your hand if you eat two to three or four meals a day. Great, all right. A few people didn't raise their hands, so that's surprising. So uh, I'm going to start out with a story, and it's actually not food service related. Um, so that's how you know it's actually real. Uh, I was walking home in New York uh, about a month ago. And uh, I was crossing the street and noticed an older gentleman actually with a, a crosswalk crossing the street. He pulled over to the side of the walkway, which you actually have to do because if you've been to New York City, walking traffic is actually a thing. And I saw him pull out his phone and make a voice search. And his voice search was stationary stores near me. Uh, I heard him do this and somewhat creepily, I kind of slowed my pace to hear the result. I lived right by uh, several stationary stores. There was a papyrus store about a block away, and there was a Hallmark store several avenues west. That Hallmark store would have been about a 10 to 15 minute walk for this older gentleman, and the papyrus store probably a two minute walk. What was interesting is after that voice search came back, I saw him turn west and head toward the Hallmark store. What was amazing about that is he made his decision based off of one answer, not based off of 10 blue links. And so I actually went up to him and told him there's a papyrus store half a block away. And then I went home and did a scan and realized why the papyrus store wasn't showing up, because they weren't marked up properly for intelligent services like voice, like search, like Amazon, Siri, Alexa, Google Home, et cetera, uh, to, find, uh, to find that stationary store. Now, when you think about how this applies to restaurants, um, the way that we as consumers, and this is relevant to anyone who eats two to four times a day, um, the way that we search for restaurants has fundamentally changed. It used to be, uh, where do you want to go eat? That's what my parents would ask me before we went out for dinner. Now it's really, what do you want to eat? And so the way people are searching are like, where can I find curly fries near me? Now, what's interesting for any restaurant marketer or anyone within the restaurant space is understanding why Arby's shows up within the map pack, so within the first three results of search here. Or if I use a more natural language search, such as I want a restaurant with Wi-Fi, good for kids, open now, and outdoor seating. Why are these the restaurants that are showing up? Well, throughout the next 20, 25 minutes or so, we're going to go through why this is happening. And I think what's unique for the restaurant space specifically is there is a lot of voice interaction. And there's a lot of restaurant brands. I think Domino's is probably the most prominent one that are building into voice search uh, to make it really easy to order and reorder. But with restaurants, a lot of that experience is visual. You want to see what the food looks like. You want to actually see the menu. Sitting and listening to Alexa read out an entire menu, um, for the cheesecake factor, you're probably going to be there for the rest of your life. So you want to actually be able to visualize and sort. And so it's kind of a pair of the two. And that's what we're going to talk about through here. So with this massive platform shift, we're witnessing three major trends. One, 
the world is having a conversation, uh, not only with each other, but the world is having a conversation with their devices. Two, your website is upside down. And three, your brand is everywhere. So we're going to start with the first. The world is having a conversation. So um, I know that we're at a voice conference, um, but it's amazing the amount of rooms that I go in to talk about voice, uh, and people don't know what a knowledge graph is. Raise your hand if you do know what a knowledge graph is. All right. Pretty good for the audience. All right. So um, for those of you who don't know, the knowledge graph was actually created by Google. I know that we're at an Alexa sponsored or an Amazon sponsored conference, but it was created by Google back in 2012. And it's the whole concept that Google knows all of, or wants to know all of the facts about the world. So does a restaurant have gluten free options? Yes or no. Are they open on Christmas? Yes or no. What's the price of a cheeseburger? $5.99 or $6.99. It's basically a brain-like database that allows Google and then Siri and then Amazon and all these other intelligent services to have conversations with consumers or with searchers. So after Google created this, obviously many, el many others followed suit. Um, and that knowledge graph has worked its way into our intelligent services or our voice devices. So, we're using an Amazon Echo as an example here, but this is the case across all different virtual assistants and digital assistants, discovery sites, et cetera. So you go to TripAdvisor, they have a similar setup where they have the UI, which is the user experience. So that's either the screen or the platform or the speaker or the microphone that we as a searcher use every day. You have the AI layer, which decides what information it's actually going to push into the user experience or onto the screen, et cetera. And then you have the knowledge graph. Knowledge graph is, again, that brain-like database that has all the information that any intelligent service wants to know or needs to know about the world. When you look at voice search and how that plays into how we think about regular search. So it used to be you wanted to be one of the top 10 blue links on the screen, or the top one, or the top two. And that's what SEO is all about. Um, right now, within voice, it's very similar to how it works in search. But in terms of becoming the voice result, um, what has been publicly stated across dozens and dozens of articles is that the only information that a brand can truly control when it comes to voice search is that knowledge layer, so is the facts that any of these brands could actually control about their information. The UI, the AI will always be changing, but that knowledge, the facts about your business, will not or are actually the things that you want to control. So that's really on the voice search side. Now, I know throughout, uh, throughout this conference, we've been talking about the skill side. Uh, and I know that a lot of brands are investing in different skills. And that's a valuable mechanism, especially now we learned this morning that a lot of that is becoming trackable. But there are two ways that restaurant brands can leverage voice search. Um, there's branded voice skills, and then there's the actual voice search itself. When you look at voice search, that's all part of discovery. That's when a consumer doesn't actually know what restaurant they want to go to. It's actually most consumers, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I think what's really interesting, when you look at the experience of voice search, it acts pretty much the same as it does within search results. So voice is becoming really exciting and really popular, but the way that Google, as an example, is feeding that voice search is the same way that it's actually feeding its desktop searches or its chatbots. So if I'm going into Google and I type in my desktop computer, where's the best Chinese restaurant near me? It's going to show me the same examples as when I type into the chatbot. And it's going to be the exact same examples as when I look within the Google, uh, Google Home and I search for best Chinese restaurants near me. Now, the question that we always want to ask ourselves as restaurant brands or restaurant marketers or anyone who works with a restaurant is how can I make sure that I'm within that map pack of the web results, in the chat results, um, but also within those voice results? Um, so I am one of those three answers, or I am the specific answer that's pushed out to me as, as the user, whether it be when I'm on the go or in my apartment asking for the best Chinese restaurants. Well, Google has announced three things that allow restaurants to appear prominently within the map pack 
or within the knowledge card, and we believe that all other intelligent services that are providing answers are following suit. One is distance, so how far you are from the actual location. Two is relevance, so if I'm searching for a restaurant with Wi-Fi, good for kids, open now, outdoor seating, well, you have to be a restaurant that has that information going into that knowledge graph. And the third component is prominence. Prominence is a confusing one. Prominence is all based on your reviews, not just your actual star rating, but the number of reviews that you have and how frequently your reviews are being updated, managed, and people are leaving those reviews. So best is one of those subjective, I guess, phrases that that makes it somewhat confusing on how a, an intelligent service will choose that. So they have to use an algorithm, and again, going back to the AI, uh, not being able to control that or the UI, um, it's important to control that information that lives within the knowledge graph so you can have the greatest opportunity for appearing for distance, relevance, and prominence. The second way that brands are now interacting with intelligent services, obviously by building skills. Um, and you have Amazon Alexa, Apple Siri, Google Assistant, Microsoft Cortana, that are all have use cases that might be different for restaurant brands. So one might be more transactional, one might be just for gathering general menu information, nutritional information, et cetera. Um, the key component here is how do we as restaurant brands appear within search results? A skill as of today is not helping a restaurant brand appear more prominently within branded or unbranded search results. Uh, it is helping if you do know that you want to order from a Domino's or you want to order from a Fazoli's or any of those brands specifically because those are restaurant brands that have actually built skills um, that are, are made for, uh, for an, a user to actually use, not necessarily an unbranded search. So the second major trend that we're seeing is that your website is upside down. So the whole concept of a website five years ago for many brands, but specifically for restaurant brands, was to drive consumers to a restaurant's homepage. From that homepage, any restaurant brand could then own the actual customer. So they can then navigate through that homepage, and they can help, they could change the size of the buttons, they can decide where they want that phone number or where they want those directions prominently displayed to help people go into that restaurant. They would navigate through the menu, they would then select a menu item, they would then go and make an online order or an actual reservation. But the way that consumers have, are searching and the information that all of these digital assistants, voice assistants, uh, maps, apps, directories are giving information to consumers has completely changed. So the way that consumers are now finding food and restaurants is no longer by a brand name. It's by a cuisine type or a food item almost 70% of the time. So going back to the two types of voice skills, or sorry, two types of ways that brands can interact with a voice device, a branded skill or via an unbranded search, this is the whole concept of driving that top of the funnel traffic that restaurant brands are always conscious about. Your branded skills are for your loyal customers that want to order from you over and over and over again. But the top of the funnel, you want to capture these guys, the people that are, uh, that are looking for information about restaurants by cuisine type or a food item, not by restaurant name. What's amazing is that restaurant brands are still very much hooked on traditional media. This is one of, uh, one of Yext's clients, uh, and it's CC's Pizza. And what we did is when we looked through their actual data and saw spikes in their location pages and their local listings, we're like, why is this happening at such random points? We then paired it up with their, uh, with their marketing calendar, their media calendar, and we found out that when they had paid media, commercials, and billboards activated, that they saw 100% lift in their local pages and a lift in their actual listings. I think what's amazing about this is that even when you have branded content in the living room of your consumers, they're still going toward maps, apps, directories, voice assistants to discover 
what more they, that location has or what more that restaurant has or if that restaurant location is open or if they have Wi-Fi, if they're good for kids, outdoor seating, menu items specifically. And then the final thing that has really shifted the way that consumers are interacting with a brand's website uh, is that they are now powering structured menu content. Now, no matter if you are a QSR like McDonald's or Wendy's Pizza Hut or a fine dining brand, uh, your menu, a restaurant brand's menu, is the number one most searched thing on a restaurant brand's website. And so now Google and Foursquare and Facebook and Yelp and TripAdvisor are taking this structured menu content, and what that's doing is that's helping consumers make a decision before they even actually get to uh, an actual brand's website or walk into the front door of a restaurant. Yex partnered with Google to do this when it was actually in beta, and we did this because we're, we're good partners with Google, um, but we also wanted to see the results of this. Um, and what we saw was an incredible increase um, in the Google search impressions when they added structured menus. These are, uh, this is a QSR, sorry, two QSRs. Uh, they saw a 17 and a 26% incremental increase on their impressions just by adding structured menus, uh, which was incredible, speaking to the point that consumers are using information that's not necessarily on your website or a brand's website to make their ultimate decision. So now what we're seeing again is your website is flipped upside down. Consumers are starting within search. They're starting within Google and Bing and Alexa uh, and Siri to make an unbranded search to decide where they want to go. Think about even if you know you want to go to a McDonald's or a Wendy's or a Burger King or a Shake Shack. You're not going to ShakeShack.com or McDonald's.com and going through their store locator uh, to decide, you know, do you want to eat there? You're usually searching in Google or asking Alexa or asking Siri for the closest McDonald's or Burger King, et cetera, near you. From there, they give you a bunch of options, and all these intelligent services, including voice services, are now allowing you to see menus or understand what jobs are available or allowing you to order online straight within those platforms, therefore never, uh, never having an actual customer land on a homepage. No, it's all right. Uh, but in an app like Waze, a uh, directions app that most of us use, when I say take me to the nearest McDonald's, yep. in, in a Waze app, and it takes me right to the one that's two miles away that I didn't know about, how does that get in? <laughs> Um, so the question was, when I use Waze and I, and I look for the nearest McDonald's, uh, how did McDonald's location actually get within Waze? Um, this was not a staged question, but they got into Waze because of Yext. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so there's that, but thank you. <laughs> Um, but, but when we talk theoretically on, on why that happens, so Waze also has that knowledge layer. So Waze has all of that base of data. Um, so how does Waze know that there's a location close to where you're driving? Well, they have your location information, but they also have to be really confident that that McDonald's location is open, you know, people have been going there, uh, that their lat long is completely correct because Waze doesn't want to give you as a consumer a bad experience. Now, I think on that point, and speaking about QSRs, Google recently changed their, uh, their Maps application where they've started using restaurants for turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So uh, instead of saying turn right at Whitney Lane, um, they'll say turn right at the nearest Denny's uh, over on the corner. Well, how does Google do that? Well, they know with confidence that Denny's has a location there, that it's open, that their signage is visible from the roadway. That's an example of their user experience changing and their artificial intelligence changing. Um, a brand like Denny's or McDonald's can't necessarily control that, um, but in your use case, McDonald's can control the facts that Waze knows or Denny's can control the facts that Google knows to help influence those types of UI and AI uh, changes. Um, but the key there, and specifically to this point, did you ever go onto the McDonald's homepage? No, and you don't need to because you were able to get all the information that you needed within the app that you were using at the time. And hopefully you're doing that search via voice too. Not, yeah, okay, great. No texting and driving. 
Um, so it's not that a, a brand's website is insignificant anymore. Actually, all these intelligent services, and if you were at uh, Dwayne Forrester's keynote earlier, he talked about schema.org. Schema is the structured coding behind any, of, uh, any website that helps a, uh, a Siri, an Alexa, a Google Home crawl that site and understand what information is relevant about that site to appear, on, uh, to appear within a search. So a brand's website website, it's not insignificant. Actually, all these intelligent services uses the brand website as the first source of truth, and then it's just replicated across 100 different places to validate how confident they are in showing that information to a consumer. And then the information that they're providing to that consumer uh, varies from the phone number to the directions to online ordering links, et cetera. It's not that a consumer's website is insignificant. Sorry, a brand's website is insignificant. It's just that consumers are taking a different path to get there. And then the final thing is that your brand is everywhere. Um, you probably got that uh, for the first two points, but the whole concept here is that uh, now the Googles, the Series, the Alexas uh, of the world, and now TripAdvisors and Yelps and Facebooks are taking more data than they ever have before. Uh, and the way that they're taking and ingesting this data is via structured data. Structured data is based on that concept of do you have Wi-Fi, yes or no? Do you have outdoor seating, yes or no? Do you have gluten-free options, yes or no? It's all of that data that lives within the knowledge graph which is empowering a more cohesive user or searcher experience as you go through that customer acquisition funnel as a restaurant brand using all of these intelligent services. One of the greatest ways that all of these intelligent services are getting that structured data is through that menu component. So I spoke earlier that in order to enhance the path for a consumer to actually get into a restaurant brand storefront is through the menu because they really want to see that menu, that's really warm and fuzzy because we give a great customer experience. The real value of that menu though is the fact that it's going in as structured data across dozens of different places and that validates that information so when consumers are making an unbranded search for tacos or french fries or ice cream near me, open now, good for kids, et cetera, that that information is available and that that intelligent service can give a more confident answer. Beyond the amount of structured data that these services are taking, there are, of course, more and more services that are continuing to come out and interact with consumers. I think what's most amazing about this slide is you look back to the 1990s and the information and the platforms that are there still exist. So platforms aren't really disappearing other than maybe like the GPS device right there. Um, but the platforms aren't really disappearing. They're just continuing to grow. Um, and so when you think about the amount of data uh, that all of these platforms are now collecting and the amount of consumer endpoints that uh, any brand has to interact with to make sure that they're in front of consumer where, when, and how they're searching, it becomes really overwhelming, but also increasingly important because with the amount of data and the amount of platforms, most high intent traffic for a business is happening off of a brand's website, about 73%. Back to your point, you, know, you were looking for McDonald's while you were in the car on Waze, you never went to any of their owned properties. You're doing it off of a brand's website. Most businesses get about two and a half times as much traffic off of their website versus on their website. Um, the average restaurant gets 10 times as much traffic off of their website than on their website. So it's really imperative and really also frustrating to restaurant brands uh, with the amount of data that they're collecting, these intelligent services are collecting, and the amount of devices that are out there that they, as usual laggards, need to keep up with, uh, with these trends. So three major trends happening today. The world is having a conversation, your website is upside down, and your brand is everywhere. Managing that data is becoming increasingly difficult, um, and so the whole concept of managing that is what really brands, uh, both within the restaurant industry and outside, are consistently evaluating today. Today's reality, and I know that we're at a voice summit um, and trying to control voice for our brand, um, but it's, it's relatively unknown still. 
The data and analytics behind voice in terms of customer acquisition, customer retention within the restaurant industry, average order value uh, and, and average retention of a customer, still relatively unknown. But what we do know today is that from a web perspective, restaurant brands have a full stack CMS. Uh, they have siloed providers for email marketing, online ordering. They might for their Alexa skills as well. Um, and then they might have a listings provider to manage their information on the Google, Bings, um, Yelps, Facebooks of the world. But when it comes to chat and when it comes to voice in terms of a search perspective, there are obviously services out there from a skills perspective. But from a search perspective, um, relatively ambiguous right now. But what we do believe is that it's not just going to be the Googles, the Bings, the Amazons, the Apples, the Facebooks, the TripAdvisors that have a knowledge graph. It's going to be brands that actually have their own knowledge graph. And the way that you intertwine that information about your brand is what allows a restaurant brand to stay best in class across all these intelligent services, all these new customer interaction points, and across this new data ecosystem that is taking more information than they ever have before. So the question is, and I know none of you work directly with or for a restaurant brand. Um, so I'm, I guess I'm painting a picture of the challenges restaurant brands are seeing today. Um, restaurant brands are managing more data than they ever have before. And so we all as consumers, when we order online, whether it be a Grubhub, or whether it be via a Domino's app or chatbot specifically, if you have a bad experience, um, it's probably because that data is coming from a million different places, and the restaurant industry is really catching up to that. So what's happening within the restaurant space is IT and marketing and real estate and franchise operations and normal operations are all, all have different systems that aren't necessarily speaking to each other yet. What's imperative for a restaurant brand as we approach this intelligent future and as it becomes absolutely necessary for them to create their own knowledge graph is to combine that information, to, to make sure that there's consistency from every point that a consumer might be interacting with that restaurant brand from a branded or unbranded search perspective all the way through to when they actually dine within a restaurant. The concept of managing your web presence, your third-party online presence, your internal operations, your existing ecosystem, your exi existing marketing stack, chat, and voice is what we call digital knowledge management. It's the concept of using that knowledge graph methodology to power all of these intelligent services, understanding that the UI and the AI will always be changing, um, but the knowledge that all of these intelligent services know and understand about your brand, that is the thing that you can power today, um, and that is what's going to set up brands for the intelligent future and allow brands to show up within searches for unbranded queries for restaurants specifically. So quick Yex background, and then we can get to a QA. and a Why not leave it to the end? Um, but the whole concept of digital knowledge management is what Yex is powering. Yex works with brands all over the world to make sure that they're managing their full digital presence and their full knowledge graph everywhere it lives online. Um, Yex is a global company, offices all over, uh, including in Asia. Um, we work with uh, brands across all different verticals, not within food service. Um, but I'm going to point out food service specifically here um, because we work with brands across food service. And the content that we produce um, and the innovation that we create is all based upon our interactions and the data that we, uh, that we power for these brands. Um, so we do a lot of research and a lot of innovation, um, and it's not just based on theory and based on what, which way the wind is blowing that day, but it's based on the research and the innovation that these brands do along with us. So uh, really appreciate your time. I think that we are just on time. Uh, maybe we could go a little bit over for some Q&A. Um, this is my information, uh, pretty simple, Twitter uh, and LinkedIn, Lee Zucker, and then my email is lzucker at yex.com. Um, but really appreciate your attention and uh, open it up for questions for the next few minutes um, before you get to your next session. Yep. 
No, so Google actually doesn't look at any other service other than their own for, for reviews. So when, when we talk about prominence in terms of reviews, they look at the reviews specifically on Google, and it's a, an algorithm with their star rating, the quantity of reviews, how often you're responding to reviews, and how often people are leaving reviews. Yeah. So, so the question is, is now Google has a, uh, has a service where if you go into a restaurant, they'll ask you right after you dine there or during your experience, how is your experience there, and then ask you to just give a star and you don't have to actually give a review, and is that influencing reviews on Google? The answer is yes. That's a pretty new service, though. Um, so it's the, the jury's still out whether it will stick around or not because you're not providing critical feedback to the restaurant brand. It's really more just confirming that they that you were there and leaving the actual review. Um, so short answer is yes, right now it does. Unfortunately, because there's no comment in there, uh, brands can't actually pull the sentiment from that to help them improve operations or improve that customer's experience. But yeah, it does uh, have an impact on that prominent search. Any other questions? Great, well thank you very much. I'll stick around for a few minutes after if you have any questions in person.